big is the opportunity this week, divisional opponent at home, to, to try to take that first step in, in to, inside the division? Yeah, I mean, I think that's all what we talk about is make, making sure that we, you know, play well and win our games at home. We, we didn't do that the first week. We've moved on. You know, you have to you have to steal a couple on the road. I think we probably certainly um, could put that one in that category. But then now coming back home, and then you have to win games in your division. So that that's really what we have with two of those things that, um, you know, we talk about uh, home game within the division. Um, a lot of respect for for Frank and, and Chris and their whole organization. You know, it's a, it's a, they, they play hard. It's a great, great football team, and it'll be a heck of a challenge. Talk a lot about responding well to adversity, not being front runners, just like you did on Sunday. Is there a reverse to that where you have to be able to respond well when things are going well and, and not lose focus? Yeah, I mean, I think that that success and, and the preparation and the willingness to, to work is not an occasional thing. It can't be um, after adversity. You know, hey, we really got to focus. You know, that, that's the whole mindset of, you know, whatever you do on Sunday or whenever you play is that you make the corrections, you move on, you know, you try to enhance the things that you did well and fix the things that you did bad and, you know, eliminate the things that get you beat. And that's hopefully the mindset that I've tried to create uh, and our staff has tried to create with, with the players. You know, there's always going to be some degree of adversity, but your guys always seem to really thrive when they feel like, Nobody's picking them to win, or they're backed into a corner. You like that about their DNA, or is there something bad about them kind of seeming to need that sometimes? Uh, I mean, I don't look at it like that. I just think that hopefully we can um, not panic um, and be able to take the situation that we have, however the games unfold. You know, we all see the games each week in this league that you know, they go in different directions and. And you have to go out there and respond and, and change some things. Um, but but I, I don't think that we – I hope that we don't rely on it. I just hope that, you know, we, we continue that mindset and then continue some consistency um, when things are going well. What's the difficulties when you're kind of preparing for two quarterbacks that's not really any idea who's going to play? What goes into that preparation-wise? Well, you know, I don't think that there's a, a, a huge difference in the skill set. I mean, I think they're going to they're going to operate their offense. Um, you know, Carson's play strength. You know, obviously Jacobs' limited exposure. Um, you know, but they have they have a talented. Their, their receivers are, are tough. They're physical. Um, it, you know, Doyle's been there forever. Very productive. You know, their backs are, are fantastic. I think they have an unbelievable group of backs. Got a lot of respect for for Taylor, for, for Hines, and then obviously Mack working his way back in. Not sure how much he'll have, but they, they're just a lot of – they have a lot of dynamic um, players. You know, receivers are tough. They're physical. Um, and, and the backs can do a lot of different things. That run defense has been so good under Coach Eber Flues. What, what is it that, that makes their run defense so, so outstanding? They play extremely hard. You know, that I respect, um, obviously, Matt and Frank, the culture that they've set there. Uh, they play extremely hard. They, they have length. They've got a good, you know, varying degrees of, of different play styles. They have some guys that are, you know, kind of ha ham away at you, you know, hammer away. And then they have some guys, you know, obviously Buckner is a you know, wild card with his length, athleticism. Um, the, the backers can run. You know, I think they're all very sound. Everybody's a, a good tackler, and that, that's really what it comes down to as far as stopping the run. That battery that they have, you know, tackle, you mentioned Buckner, you got Leonard at the second level, and then you have uh, Blackman. How much does that go into how Well, they Will, I mean, Willis is, is a great tackler. He's a good, strong safety. Their corners are, are willing tacklers, and that, that's, you know, you, you can't block everybody so that the guys sometimes that you don't block, if those guys can tackle, you know, they have the advantage. Use a number of different combinations. Hold on, let me go to Terry. But we should have actually let off with Terry. I'm sorry. <laughs> with Christian Fulton's development, is it more than just being healthy and more comfortable in the system? What What are some of the things that he's done that's elevated his game? Well, I mean, I think a lot of it has been the the health to be able to get reps and opportunities and work, um, build some consistency, build some confidence, um, some understanding of. of 
the, the techniques and the different schemes and, and, and most of that. So just being available and being able to work and therefore improve. Do you think you use a, a combination of maybe guys at the safety position with Bradley uh, now going? We'll, we'll see how the week goes and you know, there'll be somebody you know, lining up there, um, you know, whether it's Dane, Matthias, you know, well, there'll be somebody back there. What, how valuable is Michael's, Michael Pruitt's contributions on Sunday? And what's it say about a guy he can show back up here after being elsewhere all off season and play that way? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, Pruitt was, you know, somebody that knows our system. Um, but for those tight ends, you know, we've all asked them to, you know, get, get a, a, as excited about blocking, you know, as we do, you know, catching some passes. And, and they did. I thought they settled down there a little bit. Um, but we ask a lot of those guys to be able to help us on the edge of our run game. And, uh, and I know they'll continue to work on that. With letting uh, McDougal go, and does that kind of put your faith in, in Kirk Shank and feel like he's healthy and, and worthy of, of Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into – you know, roster decisions and, you know, obviously uh, performance is, is probably at the forefront, versatility, fit, you know, there's just a lot of things and, you know, we just, um, you know, that was a decision that we made. How has how is Dane come along here? Obviously, missed a lot of time, mm -hmm. struggled to be available. Just the stretch of availability, have you seen some things out of him as a player? That yeah, I mean, he went in there the other day and, um, you know, it wasn't perfect, but, but he played with some speed. He tried to be physical. And, you know, we've always, I guess, had a vision for Dane and, you know, somewhat of the, you know, the injuries that have limited his exposure and availability. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, to pr improve, we talked about Christian Fulton, you, you need to be out there. You need to be practicing and, and seeing those things. So hopefully, you know, he can can put a few good weeks together, certainly start today and put a, put a good day together uh, and, and build on that. In a few uh, Derrick Henry big runs in your day, I uh, wonder what one of those runs is like watching from the sideline in terms of what you see, what you hear, uh, you know, one of those big monster TD runs like you had there in Seattle. Uh, you know, really whether the angle, you know, this, you know, I mean, it gets to the second level or the third level, it, it's going to be, you know, is the is the what's the guy's angle look like and you know usually within about 15 or 20 yards you're going to know you know pretty pretty soon if he's going to take it the distance um, you know obviously a valuable piece you know congratulate him on another you know AFC offensive player of the week award um, but uh, that's what we've come to expect from Derek and and that's you know that's a large part of who we are the, the uh, reaction on the sideline, you know, what's, what's the noise level is 10, 20, 30, that kind of thing? Well, I mean, I think at home it's a different thing when it's at home and then, you know, obviously on the road, but um, it's just, it, it's timely. Those are those are big, huge plays, um, explosive gains that, you know, I think that they take note. You know I mean? You could play it well for four or five yards all game and then all of a sudden break one and just, you know, we've had that happen to us. You know, we've played played well against the run and then, you know, have a guy break one and it's just like, you know, it's somewhat, you know, defeating just to know that, man, you just played it for 25 runs. You played it really well and then, and then gave up a big one. Has Ola been maybe even better than you guys expected, maybe as a pass rusher? You know, probably as a defensive player, and, you know, we got to continue to, uh, you know, work him in there. That's, um, you know, he plays extremely hard. Um, he takes advantage of the, the opportunities that he had. So, like we always say, that, that earns more opportunities. He said he, he obviously doesn't want to be roughed, but he'll take the trade off for a first down. And the 15 yards, you'd obviously rather that be blocked up and, and throw a conversion pass there. But is that a penalty with worth the trade off when things go wrong? Well, if I knew that you know he wasn't going to be injured, um, obviously. But you know I appreciate the toughness, and I know this entire team appreciates the toughness of our quarterback to, to stand in there and, and try to deliver the ball. And you know he doesn't 
doesn't complain in, in some of these you know pressures that you know we may miss or somebody gets beat. I think he understands that's part of the job. He, we would all like that to not happen, um, but but he doesn't he doesn't get scared and duck and, and run away from it. He uh, he usually stands in there and tries to tries to make a play for us. Percentage of game winning drives for for Ryan since the time that he's been here. Something about his mental makeup, do you think, that you know allows him to be successful in those situations? I, mean, I think he's got good grasp of what we're trying to do and the process and, and trying to get us uh, into the plays as quickly as possible. But I think that, that it's everybody knowing it. You know, getting the receivers, whoever catches it, you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing to, to get the ball back, to get lined up, to get in the formation, the linemen to get the protection, to snap, the, to get set, to snap the football. You know, and then I think we have really good communication uh, on the sidelines and, and through our coaching staff um, about the situation and how we want to handle it, and you know how much clock we want to use, and 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 being um, being all on the same page there and operating efficiently. Kind of certainty with the left side of your offensive line right now. Uncertainty. And any kind of certainty, like do you know what what it's going to look like Sunday? Uh, no. But we'll be, you know, like there was last Sunday. There'll be a left tackle and there'll be a left guard, and they'll play their ass off. That that's all we that's all we are certain of. I hope. I expect Taylor to be out there today. Mike, you liked the emphasis on taunting. Just wondering, so far early, if you think it's being called correctly. I know you may only. I I don't. I I. There's a lot of things, whether I agree that are called correctly, or incorrectly. Uh, the the intent of that again is that these actions that are directed towards uh, the opponent um, you know, have have no room in, in our game. You know, there's a lot of kids that watch our football games, uh, finger pointing, getting in a guy's face, pointing your finger at him. You know, you know, flexing on them, standing over top of them. You know, those are things that 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 I believe and I was taught. Uh, you know, there's a way to celebrate. Nobody's trying to take any kind of celebration or having fun out of this game. It's an emotional game. Um, I pointed out to our players, you know, we make a play, you know, go celebrate with the guy that made the play. Uh, we, have, we have nothing to, to say to, to the opponent. You know, we, we, you know, somebody else made the play. Go celebrate with, with your teammates. That, that's, that's the message that I'm trying to send, whether you know, I agree with what they call or, or not call. That's always been the case. Read call against them. Did you think that that there, there's a lot of calls that you know we could sit here and debate whether it's a spot challenge, um, whether it's a, a hands of the face, whether it's a holding. You know we could do that all day, but uh, I'm going to get back to work. I just that, a lot of push. You just back. what? I just wanted that one call. I just, it just you know just in terms of because you obviously saw that. I mean, did, just in general, do you think that's about what they're looking to stop? I think that for the five, fifth or sixth time, we're, we're trying to keep, uh, or at least our football team, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to tell our guys, celebrate with your teammates, you know, be as excited as you want to, be excited with your teammates, with your sideline, you know, that, that's what it is. And like, like uh, everything else that, that our league does, um, you know, they will, they will get, you know, come together and they will decide how they want to officiate it. But from our standpoint, with the Tennessee Titans, it's a clear message: uh, celebrate with your teammates, or run the risk of uh, of hurting your football team.